$15,000 is an entirely reasonable amount of money to spend on a car that offers safe and reliable transportation. But could you buy something cool and fun and special instead? Yes, you can. In fact, as always, you could buy some depreciated AMG car like this CL63 or really any of their body styles at some age along its depreciation cycle. You could even buy a really cool Maserati, certainly in the 02 to 06 vintage. They had a lot of options, including some early manual cars or a later Grand Sport. In fact, I think if you shopped hard enough, you could probably find an 08 Gran Turismo for that. To me though, if you said, let's go spend 15 grand today on the most enjoyable car you could, I would buy an E46 M3. At 15, it'd be hard to find an original manual car, but you could certainly buy an SMG car and then spend a couple of grand converting it to manual. And that would be awesome. It is certainly on my car bucket list, and that would be my pick. But I was curious to see what my friends would say, and these were their answers. Hey everyone, Sean Kudnick here with Dream Car Exchange and the $15,000 question today. There is only one answer, and it is this. This is a 2000 Porsche 911 Cabriolet. So this particular car, I actually purchased for exactly $15,000. And this actually has some nice options. It has the 18 inch turbo twist wheels. It has electronic headlights. It also, it's a six speed manual and really came fully ready to go. Um, so the all important IMS bearing was completed and updated in this car along with a new clutch. So really fully ready to go. And it's really hard pressed to find a better sounding car than this for 15 grand. This is my terrible idea. I would buy a $12,000 2008 Porsche Cayenne Turbo. Then I would spend about $1,600 on a five inch lift kit and the rest on oversized off-road tires. So basically I would have a $15,000 modern 500 horsepower twin turbo V8 rally truck. It looks way more expensive than it is, and it's a cheap enough Porsche where you're not worried about it being scratched or dented. When I was looking for a car I could buy for $15,000, I came across a pretty cool half-scale Porsche 917. It's in golf racing colors, it's 163cc. Unfortunately, I can't fit in it being six foot two, but if I could, I'd instantly feel like a five-year-old. And with that in mind, I came across one of the first cars I owned, which was a Mercedes 190E. Now I've seen one, it's a 1992, it's been messed around a bit, it's got a twin turbo conversion, it's been lowered. It would probably be a pain to own, but on paper, it seems like a lot of fun. $15,000, what am I gonna buy? Well, I had to make this decision recently. I bought an E46 M3. I paid 12.5 for mine with 82,000 miles. It was an SMG, which is a garbage transmission. I don't recommend getting one, but it's an easy way into the car if you get one with an SMG, and then just do a manual swap, 1500 bucks for parts, a weekend in a garage. Now I have a great E46 M3 manual. I love the thing. It's great to take to the track. I can daily drive it. I can take it on road trips. It's even great with snow tires in the winter. The car is just an awesome machine for 15 grand. So this week, Ed Bolin gave us a whopping $15,000 for whatever we would like to purchase. And he's gonna swear up and down that all of his friends are wrong. $15,000, you can play it safe. Get yourself a Kia Soul, 15 grand, out of the box with a warranty. Or you can buy something awesome like this. For that kind of money, you can get yourself a 16 foot mobile boom box from the 80s. I mean, come on, what's radder than that? I would buy a really heavily depreciated Mercedes-Benz S65 AMG bi-turbo. The 2003 to 2006 models were $150,000 to $180,000 new. I found one on Auto Trader for $16,900. So a little shrewd negotiation, and I'd be right within budget. What would I buy for fifteen grand? Well, it should probably be something practical, something you can drive every day, get great gas mileage, save and put a couple thousand miles on a road trip on it, put all your stuff in it, your dog, and be able to do anything you want to do. But that would be this. And a lot of you guys are going to find that boring. 2013 X3, all-wheel drive, panoramic sunroof, four-cylinder turbo, 26 plus miles to the gallon, but it's not fun. So even though it's practical, I had to pick something fun. And I'm going to stick with BMW 
because that's what I love. So, I picked a 1991 BMW 850. That's two BMW V6s put together to make a V12. This car is perfect. It is designed as its own vehicle. It's got a V12, pop-up headlights. You can get it in a six-speed manual. It's been wind tunnel tested. And it's an iconic 90s car. So honestly, my pick for 15K would probably be the same as my pick for 25, just an AP1 instead of an AP2. But there is another choice for this price range that would offer some serious performance for the money, and of course that's a C5 Corvette. Now, a Z06 would probably be pretty rough at 15K, but what I would get is actually a 99 fixed roof coupe. It's the lightest and the stiffest C5, also I think the rarest, but they're still cheap, so that's awesome. Uh, would make a great track car build, um, or just fun on the street. There's one other thing I found though, uh, when I was looking at Auto Tempest for the, the prices for C5s, I noticed a couple of C3 uh, Stingrays, uh, 75 and a 76, both in the 15, 16 grand range. Now, those would not make good track cars, but they would be damn cool, so that'd be a good choice too. This one actually wasn't that hard for me, because uh, a lot of people ask me this question on our podcast, and so I have a canned answer that I'm going to give you. A couple of years ago, I did a tuner car challenge uh, involving a bunch of different shop vehicles from a bunch of different California tuner shops, and the car that impressed me and surprised me the most, performed beyond my expectations of it, was a 2014 Mustang GT prepped by Maximum Motorsports and they had a handling kit for that car that with the wheels and tires they put on it was worth $8,500 in modifications. Now today you can buy a 2011 to 2014 Mustang GT for probably around $10,000 and add this kit and be right in the wheelhouse of the 15k. Would I be buying for $15,000? Well, I found two pretty tempting options on Auto Tempest. First, there is a 2002 WS6 Firebird. Second, there is a 2011 2SS Camaro. Both are six-speed manuals. The Firebird has the LS1. The Camaro has the LS3. My first choice is the 2008 Volkswagen R32. Really fun car to drive, all-wheel drive, 250 horsepower, 236 foot-pounds of torque, zero to 60 in six seconds. If it was me and I had a budget of only $15,000, I wouldn't be able to buy cars like the ones behind me, but what I would buy is I would buy a Mercedes S550. Now you can buy a really nice like 2008, nine or 10 S550 right in that range with very limited miles, around 20, 30,000 miles. And they are great cars as daily drivers. I mean, you're getting 30 cents on the dollar, if not 10, 15, 20 cents on the dollar, depending on the mileage and condition you're buying it. And I think that's just a lot of car for the money and it should be something most of you do out there if you're looking for a cheap car. 15K occupies a weird space between the 10 and 25K picks. I feel like you can either get the world's best example of your 10K pick or an Ed Bolian example of the 25K pick. There's lots of cars to choose from. You could get a BMW M Roadster, but I think it looks kind of phallic. You could get a Corvette C5. You could get a Corvette C6, but you have to buy a really beat up C6. And who wants a beat up Corvette? You could buy a Honda S2000, but I don't really think they sound good to anybody over 25 years old. So for my pick, I take a Porsche 986 Boxster S. It's looked down upon by the 911 guys and the purists, but I think it's a really unique looking car and you could get a great example in a unique color and good condition with the IMS bearing already done and probably some good upgrades as well in that budget. Best car you can buy for $15,000. E39 BMW M5, 4.9 liter V8, 400 horsepower, 6 speed manual, one button turns off all the traction control, golf clubs in the trunk, car seats in the back, go to the track, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can buy these cars for probably as little as 10 grand and up to probably about 70 grand depending on how nice of one you want. You can get a decent driver for 15 grand. Uh, to me, it's not only the best $15,000 car, it's the best car ever, and that's not just me saying that, I honestly believe that. What would I buy for $15,000? Series 1 Jaguar SJ6. Brilliant car, appreciating classic, going up in money all the time. 
don't buy this one because it's going to cost 20 billion dollars to fix buy the best one you can make sure it's a six cylinder with a double overhead cam and you'll be laughing just imagine xke prices were worth nothing at one point in time and all these are doing is going up and then a couple of years you could trade in and buy yourself a skyline or something so for a fifteen thousand dollars budget uh been thinking about this for this week and I realized I had actually bought a car uh, for this budget. It was my Cannonball Run Audi uh, that I had bought like 2014 I think for my first run that ended up uh, 3053. Uh, look it's not bad what you can get for this budget. V60 Di uh, brought to from 232 horsepower to 313 by apt. The car was completely made by apt the body everything it works pretty well while the little preparation in the back is not uh, included for this price but what can we do what's up guys so for 15,000 I have to believe that the best bang for your buck is a Porsche 996 manual you're gonna find a car that's probably 70,000 to 150,000 miles but man, these cars are incredible. Years ago, I had one as a daily driver. It was perfect. The only thing that ever went wrong was the window regulator for about $180. I fixed it myself. You can't go wrong with a Porsche 911 at 15,000. 15 grand is an awesome price point. There are lots of really fun cars you can get at that price. One of my favorites is the M345, which is the E36 M3 four-door with a five-speed. Awesome track car really practical, a little more rare than the coupe. I also absolutely love the C5 Z06 Corvette. It's fast as hell, it's an American V8 and stick shift. You can track it and beat anyone once you learn how to drive that car. And then one of my all time favorites for 15K is the Honda S2000. It's got a six speed, it revs to the moon to 9000, which is a style of car that I love and you can't beat it. Chris with Vinwicky here and my pick this week at $15,000 is going to be a 2015 Honda Accord V6 Coupe. I love the styling on this generation Accord. Not a huge fan of 2016 and newer, but that's my number one pick. Now, I get that that's probably a little bit boring compared to some of the other picks. Probably going to hear a lot of S2000s. You can get some pretty good ones in this price range. My backup pick, if you're looking for something a little bit more exotic, I found a 1995 840 CI with about 112,000 miles for sale down the street. Touch over 15K, but with some bargaining, I think you can get it down. That's my backup pick this week. So this week at $15,000, we had the option of giving you guys two choices. The Jared Obscure Weird Choice, and then something more practical that you guys might actually want to use as buying advice. So my legitimate buying advice for you guys applies to both of these picks. First, if you're looking for something to drive every day that is kind of your first tuner car, I would look at getting one of the twins, the Scion FRS or the Subaru BRZ. Right around $15,000 is where you start finding the manual options. I would definitely get the manual over the automatic. It's not a huge powerhouse, but they are so modifiable. There are so many options for body kits, turbo kits, superchargers, suspension. There's so much out there. You're gonna have a ton of fun getting one and slowly turning it into your own version of the car. Now, these are much harder to find at this price point, and I've picked it once before, and that's the Lexus ISF. I love my ISF. The wife drives it every day. It's fantastic for, for that role. You're gonna have to get a lot of miles on one. Mine had just under 200,000 when I picked it up at just under 13,000. Again, they occasionally pop up. Again, high mileage examples, but it is a Toyota product. They are very reliable. If you can behave, you'll actually get 28 miles to the gallon, if not a little bit better. It's hard to do when you have over 400 horsepower ready to go and scream, but you can't go wrong, really, with either of those picks. What's up, everybody? Mike from Max Speed. Man, $15,000 is my perfect price point. I would go with the Honda S2000. It has one of the best feeling manual transmissions ever. It only comes manual, only comes rear wheel drive. The seats even come with a hole in the back for your helmet because they know you're going to want to race the car and track the car. It is the best driver's car for the money, and you can't beat it. For $15,000, the car for you should be needlessly complex, vastly overweight, and tremendously affordable. Something that plunged, nay, swan-dived from over $100,000 in value down to the cost of a new Chevy Spark. But something that perhaps set the FIA speed record 
for covering 4,815 miles in just 24 hours. That's a 200 mile an hour average. And yet, it needs five computers to agree with each other just to shift out of park. So I'm talking about the Volkswagen Uber Oops, the Phaeton W12. Yeah, but, oh, best car for 15K. I thought you wanted the worst. I got it, okay, all right, let me start over. For $15,000, the car for you should be incredibly simple, light and nimble and tremendously fun. And two cars that hit it right in the feels are the legendary Mini Cooper, the classic Mini Cooper in all its wonderful variations, and the loopy and lovable Citroen Docevo or the 2CV. Both are easy to work on, parts are plentiful, and they'll be welcomed into two of the most amazing, enthusiastic communities you could ever hope for. What would I buy for $15,000? That's an easy one. BMW M235i. When I tested it for Motor Trend back in 2015, I called it the best handling BMW I'd driven in 10 years. And that's the truth. The 2 Series chassis is beautifully balanced. The M235i, you can get a beautiful one for $15,000 used now. And it's got a 3-liter turbo that's making 320 horse stock before you chip it up. So what would you go out and buy that is going to make all the sense in the world and still excite you every day when you go out to it? And there are 150 answers that are correct to this question. But I would go ahead and say it's got to be the Honda Cordero deck. They're old enough that you can import them. If you don't know what they are, good. That's part of the point. Um, they are this god-tier JDM import, this just unobtainium. They were super rare, even Japan. Um, you, can, you can't really find a whole bunch of them. But that's part of the appeal. For $15,000, I think I would do a... Volkswagen R32, a Mark IV, or an E46 M3. $15,000 is a tough one for me, excluding the usual suspects, Miata, Boxster, Corvette. Uh, not that they're bad choices or good choices, but they're, they're just boring, they're expected. Uh, plus, if you're listening to me, you're expecting me to probably suggest something that is the driving distilled to its core. And so I have two choices for you. The first coming in under budget at roughly $10,000, is a 125cc shifter cart. If you've ever wondered what pro drivers from IndyCar and Formula One all the way down to us lowly stunt slash precision drivers do to stay in driving shape, many of us run shifter carts because nothing feels faster than a shifter cart. And it's not that they're the fastest things on the planet, although they'll do zero to 60 in about two and a half seconds. They'll run to 100 miles an hour if they're properly geared in about six and a half seconds from a standstill. But it's just that you are so busy in a shifter cart and they are so physically demanding. Now, my second choice is going to push the price cap a bit. It's going to challenge it. Uh, so you might have to find a pre-abused version of a side-by-side. -side. Let me tell you, if you've never been in one of these things with nearly 200 horsepower in the top spec ones and 20 plus inches of suspension travel, they are about as much fun as you can have on four wheels. I'm going to suggest either the Polaris or the Can-Am versions, the top versions, 1,000cc turbocharged are the best ones that I've tried. Um, and they're truly amazing. Yes, they're 20 to 25 grand brand new, but used, and if you channel your inner ed for some shrewd negotiating, maybe it's possible. The bottom line is that if you've had the itch to go racing or to buy a racing car, either of these two choices will scratch that itch on a budget, relatively speaking. $15,000, Italian, Pininfarina designed, mid-engine, what am I talking about? 1976, Lancia Scorpion. That would hands down be my pick for $15,000 because it's got a little bit of the uh, Stratos in there uh, along with WRC lineage and uh, the fact that it's a mid-engine Italian sports car. Uh, however, that might break. So in the event that you were looking for something that is just slightly more reliable, I found this awesome, awesome 2004 Volkswagen R32 which is fantastic for a daily, uh, for an enthusiast. You get a stick, you get all-wheel drive, a naturally aspirated uh, six-cylinder, 
and it's a hatchback so you can throw your things in there you could take it camping you can do anything with that car so much fun and not a whole lot to go wrong so those two were my picks for fifteen thousand dollars well, if we're talking about a $15,000 budget, there are lots of choices at this price level. Miatas, VW GTIs, the FRS BRZs, WRXs, and even some front-wheel drive cars. But to me, any sports car really must be at least rear-wheel drive. And of course, it has to have an abundance of support from the automotive aftermarket for performance parts. And overall, most importantly, it must be fun to drive, right? So assuming that we, we're going to look at cars made in the last 20 years or so, here are, my, here are my picks. I've narrowed it down to basically two choices, 370Z, 3.7 liter V6, making 332 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque, and it's available in a manual transmission. My other choice would probably be a 2012 Audi S5, the one with the 4.2 liter V8, which makes 354 horsepower and 325 uh, pound feet of torque or so to six you can get it as, as a six speed manual and it claws its way to 60 miles in under five seconds now i've owned two audis in my life the brilliant 2007 rs4 and my current grocery getter the 2017 s3 and in my opinion the audi's interior should serve as a benchmark for all sports co sports coupes globally ultimately if i had to pick one it would be the s5 because of the audi build quality the all-wheel drive and the premium interior feel that's my take all right, for $15,000, I have two choices, as you do. The first one would be an early 1990s BMW 850Ci. The reason? V12. <laughs> I mean, that's basically the best reason. Also, it's kind of pointy, two doors. It's got pop-up headlights, although they're sort of lazy. They're just kind of like, I'm rich and I have a V12. But it still looks really good. So for 15 grand, you'll get one. You might find one with less than 100,000 miles, but probably not. However, and unfortunately, it's gonna be automatic, most likely. But nowadays, it's pretty easy to find the adapter kits and such. So you get yourself a decent car for 15 grand, and you can manual swap it later. The early 1990s BMW, I have a sneaking suspicion, is relatively easy, and that engine shares a similar lineage to the engine that is in the McLaren F1. I doubt that much is the same, but I think the block could be. And if not, it's the architecture. And even if not, then you can just still say it at a party and it sounds cool. The other reason, the other thing to buy is a motorcycle. I would scour the earth and find find an early to mid 70s Ducati 750 Sport for that amount of money. You might find one that's pretty decent. It'll be kind of the sit up touring bike with the high handlebars, but you can always put the half fairing on it and sport it out a little bit more. So those are my choices for 15 grand. So for me, um, when I was in high school, I had a 240SX. Awesome car, but I always loved the 300ZX, but couldn't afford it at the time. So that's what I would do is get a 90s, early 90s, 300ZX with really low mileage. They come in at about 20 grand Canadian, which fits the budget. And, uh, you know, I think that would just be a fun kind of nostalgic car to have the nice twin turbo and hopefully the ones with low mileage have been maintained or rebuilt by now. Uh, so that's the fun one, the more practical car. Uh, I'd probably go a different direction. I've seen some 2016 BMW uh, 328 diesels with pretty low mileage as well. Great condition. That's an amazing commuter car once we ever get back to, to traveling. And uh, I think that's what I'd have as a smarter choice. I think they're around 20K as well. For 15 grand, there's only one thing I would buy out of any other car on earth, and it's this. And I own it. This is a manual 300 horsepower wagon. My wagon has 450 horsepower, but you can find good examples of the Volvo V70R P2 generation from 04 to 07 here in the United States for around $15,000 low mileage, manual, sporty wagon, can carry the family, can carry the kids and be super fun on a back road. There's really no drawbacks to this car other than the engine block cracks, but don't pay attention to that. Just buy one, you're gonna enjoy it. Thank you all so much. Great answers as always. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and let us know in the comments if you've got a better idea of what we should have bought for $15,000. Thank you to Extreme Experience for sponsoring this video and this month of car stories. Extreme Experience gives you the chance to get behind the wheel of your dream car on some of the most amazing tracks around America. They have a fleet of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens, Porsches, anything you want, including the new C8 Corvette, for you to drive as hard and as fast as you want to. So be sure to check out the link in the description below to a discount on their exotic car driving experiences and you'll be well on your way to getting behind the wheel of your dream car.